you ready? They said, oh, no, no, you're not ready to run Facebook ads. I said, but yet you sold me into this program. So what am I going to do? They said, you have to do something called organic. And I said, is that like carrots? <laughs> Yeah. I didn't know what organic. I said, I've never heard that term. I thought, what are we talking about here? Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of How I Work. I'm Josh Becerra. I am so excited to have John Omlor with me today. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, so, John, you, John, you are. This is where I'll get it right. J John, right? Yeah. That was good. Good. John, you are a business strategist, online business coach, and certified servant leadership executive coach. At 54 years old, you are a solo parent in deep debt, got yourself online and to 1 million in 17 months without ads, and since have scaled multi millions in four years. Super impressive story. Your company has helped over 380 businesses to thrive online. You are emotionally connected to helping others make money, have lived in a lack of years, and overcame that mindset. Now, helping as many people as you can to maximize their profits, reach their full potential while being the visionary they are destined to be. I'm super excited to have this conversation. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So, you know, I mentioned a little bit about your story at the, at the beginning of it, and it's pretty amazing going from, you know, deep in debt to a multi-million dollar company. Can you just tell the audience a little bit about that story and what led you to focus on organic marketing, which is how you've driven your business? how you got to where you are today? Sure, it's so interesting when you say that. I'm like, yeah, I am at multi-millions and it's, it's I'm the same person. So uh, I think that what just struck me was to just tell people, first of all, I'm just a person. And I got yeah. online and a, a single person got online and made a million dollars with me and a little bit of you know assistance here and there. So it wasn't like, you know, there's multi-million and, you know, executive assistance and it was just me behind my laptop. So. You know, I just wanted to impart that first because I thought that's right. I, I have a bit of a team now, but I keep it lean. You know, I do <laughs> less, but it's a lean team. Um, <clears throat> I beg your pardon. So what I did was um, four years ago, I was um, just you know I didn't I, I was a failure. I wasn't I wasn't it wasn't working. You know, my life wasn't working. And I woke up one morning, I thought, I'm 54 years old, I'm in deep anxiety because I'm not fulfilling any kind of purpose here. I was taking care of my kids and taking them to school and you know, I had a couple clients and I'd go nonstop networking and but I just felt like I was just going through these motions mm -hmm. and you know, my main uh, occupation was taking care of the kids and that's great but I thought, I really need to make some money and, and, and fulfill my purpose as well as making money. I just woke up really frustrated and full of anxiety that day and I thought, what am I doing? And the thought struck me. I thought, well, I got to get online. And then the thought came to me, if not now, when? And I thought, okay. Oh my goodness, that's powerful because I'm 54 years old. It's true. If not now, when? When actually? Now's the time. When? Yes. And it wasn't like, you know, I was 30, 32 year old saying, if not now, when? It's a 54 year old woman in deep debt with two children. I thought, oh my gosh. The other thing that really was starting to really bug me was, you know, I didn't want my children to see me fail and model sure. the failure for their lives. Like, oh, well, that's what happens when you're, you know, a, a solo parent. And I thought, no, I will not have that happen. So I yeah. just propelled, I just got up and I thought, okay, that's it. I ought to do this. So I just found a, a course and I plunked down 10K on three different credit cards. And I thought, I'm just going to see what happens. And it wasn't the best course. That's okay. I got a lot out of it no matter what, because that's who I am. And I figured out organic marketing and, and I just did it. And I thought this has to work because if it didn't, I thought, what would I do? And then yeah. the, the, the amazing thing was I got positioned. I started making money. I started helping a lot of people and COVID started happening a few months later. Mm. So I was like, whew, that's good that I was online and positioned already because if I'd been offline still in COVID, I would have been such down a deep, dark hole of not being able to even get clients offline. It would have just been two years of just me more debt and more demoralization so i just am really really thankful that that happened at that time yeah it's a it's an amazing story and i think what's interesting is your growth came literally through like your focus on one channel i've had a a previous guest who was very much a 
a fan of saying you need to just focus on one channel pick one channel and be really good at it and yours uh, obviously organic uh, growth um, so can you tell us about like okay you took the course and what were some of those earliest kind of organic growth days for you and where did you start to understand like oh this is working well <clears throat> excuse me at first it was not working <laughs> and I had no training on it. I, I actually, this program was more about Facebook ads. And I got in there and I thought, oh, oh, this is obvious. I cannot run Facebook ads. I have no offer. That's just going to yeah. be so much money. Four years ago, they were working better than they are now. And by the way, I've tested every kind of ad. I've tested every kind of ad. They just don't work that well for me. They don't work that well for other people. So I know what I'm talking about because I've tried both sides. And actually, a, a Facebook ads. A manager that I met the other day goes, well, the Facebook ads, you know, just aren't smiling on you. Maybe because you're so good at organic. I thought, well, maybe. I, I don't have that kind of a mindset. I just don't think they work that well. But anyway, no. so I said to the people in the program, I said, wait a minute. I can't be running. They said, oh, no, no, you're not ready to run Facebook ads. I said, but yet you sold me into this program. So what am I going to do? They said, you have to do something called organic. And I said, is that like carrots? <laughs> Yeah. I didn't know what organic, I said, I never heard that term. I thought, well, what are we talking about here? And I said, okay, so what do I do? I said, I don't see any trainings in the program. And they said, oh no, just just, just go talk to people on, on, online. Mm. I said, you're telling me that's my coaching, go talk to people online? Yeah, just go talk to people and you know, tell them what you do and get them on a call. And I said, okay, no system. So I just went out and I thought, okay, I can do this. This is what they're saying. I, this is my own. I, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do ads. That was clear to me. Okay, I'm not going to do funnels and ads and pour money down a drain for a new offer. I thought, okay. So I was initially teaching uh, or coaching all entrepreneurs because I've coached many different businesses offline. Yeah. I thought I was going to do the same offline and online. It did not work. So I started talking to hundreds and hundreds. I did. I thought, that's good market research. Just talk to hundreds, hundreds, nine hundred conversations I had in eight weeks, 900. Wow. So I'm just letting yeah, you know the incredible. level of doing the reps, that, that doing something well and mastery happens. 900, I just thought, I'm just going to go for it. And I started getting all these conversations, what people wanted, what they didn't want, what they're struggling, just so much. And then after a while, I thought, oh my gosh, the people that really need the help are the coaches. So I thought, that's it. It's coaches. So I got that aha moment. <clears throat> and I'm a coach, so I understand them. Excuse me. <clears throat> and, um, and I, I just, I had 18 sales calls and nobody was hiring me. I thought, oh, this is not working. So it was really stressful. I thought, this is yeah. not working. Another 10K not working all this time. Ah. And I had completely gone, I, I'd completely gone all in. I thought, I'm abandoning offline. And I just thought, I'm not going back. And if I get one or, you know, if I'm at an event, that's different. But I had already cut the cord. I thought, I'm not doing that. No, no I'm all in. I thought, I have nowhere to go now. This has to work. So it was very stressful. <laughs> and... My daughter saw me all stressed and I was working nonstop trying to work this thing out. How do I do this? So I figured a lot out, which was great for my clients. On the 18th sales call, on the eighth week of this program, I got my first yes because I go. dialed in my offer and, and the guy says to me, do you have any clients for this? And I said, no. He said, no. I said, no. No. I said, I've been coaching eight years offline, business coaching, executive coaching, companies, teams, this you would be my first client. He went, hmm, interesting. So he tells his wife, and his wife and he get back to me, and he goes, we are hiring you because we cannot believe you're so honest to not lie about, you know, fake yeah, testimonials. Yeah. I said, never gonna happen. So he came in and he got a 30K client even before our first coaching call. He said, he turns up to the coaching call, and I'd gotten two other clients that week. Now I had three in one week, okay? Yeah. So I made more money, and like, my program was 5k then I made $15,000 in one week that was more than I'd ever seen in my life I was like yeah. oh it's working so it was I like can a, do this it's working yeah I was like wow I got three we have a program and he turns up and he goes do you believe in the law of attraction and I said the law of attraction with action yes I do he goes John mm -hmm. we got a 30k client just just by starting working with you I was like great that was a great start 
So, so that's how it happened. It was really just messy. It was messy. This single mom in deep debt getting online, and I was hardly sleeping. I was working really long hours trying to figure it out, you know. And it's like, oh, I'll take a shower tomorrow, you know, that feeling. <laughs> like, it's okay. But you were putting in the reps. I'll wash my hair in three days, you know, just, yeah, just trying to take care of the kids while I'm doing it. It was actually summer vacation, I think, at that point. Yes, it was. So I was like, you know, so luckily I didn't have as much to do with the kids, you know, and I was like, and then it just worked. And when I got that first client, I cried and my kids and I danced around the house. It was like, I did this. We did ah! And they're yeah. like, mom, that's amazing. So it was, you know, it wasn't this, you know, very sophisticated entree into the online world. It was so messy, so, so messy. And I just kept going and it was working. I was so thrilled. I was just doing it. I was like, wow, this is really working. And it just exploded. And so I got to sit and I got to a million and I didn't even realize it. I was like, you know, where am I actually? I added it all up. I thought, oh my gosh, I hit a million a couple months ago. Because <laughs> I had just That's had my, my head down, you know? It was yeah. great. That feeling of when it's in flow, it's amazing. Yep. Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously it was messy at the beginning. You put in the reps, but now you've got a little bit more figured out. You've got a small but mighty team. Um, and so now today, you, I believe you continue to exclusively flow focus on organic and so i'm really curious like for you and your clients what are the kind of go-to organic platforms or differences that you're seeing for you and your clients in those platforms um are there certain platforms like linkedin that you might recommend for coaches or that or other platforms that you'd kind of dissuade coaches from using so what what now after, you know, fast forward, have you learned about organic? Okay, so first of all, any platform can be amazing for a, a particular offer, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, I, I'm not this categorical person because I understand how stuff works. So yeah. some people crush it on Twitter. You know, now personally, I'm not using Twitter, but if I went to Twitter and made that a strategy, I could crush it. It's just not one of my platforms, okay? so. Um, I crushed it on Facebook and actually I made the million literally almost all with my Facebook personal profile and a little bit of LinkedIn because I'd just gotten on LinkedIn. So it was, yeah. it was Facebook and LinkedIn, okay? And so I became really good at Facebook, mastered that. Then I integrated and, and I didn't turn my back on Facebook. Then I integrated, you know, one plate spinning and I got the next plate spinning with LinkedIn, got really good at that, okay? And mm -hmm. by the way, we keep seeing what works on the platforms and we keep you know, being abreast of what's going on and, and new things, okay? Then we then went to Instagram. We're really good at Instagram. So we have three platforms we've mastered. So any, any coaching client can be successful with us because they're either gonna be on LinkedIn if they're an executive coach, that's where they should be, mm -hmm. career coaches, LinkedIn, other people. So they can, they can be either on one or several of these three. And we know these three are gonna cover any type of coach. Now I'm also on TikTok now. We're just experimenting with TikTok and at some point I'm gonna dial that in. And then, because of certain offers that are also great on TikTok. Usually Instagram and offers on Instagram is usually gonna be okay on TikTok. If something's good on Facebook, often it'll work on Instagram. Something's on LinkedIn, sometimes it'll just work on LinkedIn if it's depending on the yeah. offer. It's more like a corporate -y consulting offer because I do work with you know higher end consultants that you know the offer's pretty big offer, right? So there's always some uh, mix you can do, and we really customize the, the, the energy and the, the offer of the client to, to find the platform that's going to work for them. Yeah. So the platform that I've been kind of spending my time in, because uh, I've taken this philosophy of like, hey, let's focus on one and like try to go deep, um, mm -hmm. has been LinkedIn. Yes. So I've been using LinkedIn a lot more for my own kind of personal brand building and also like the organic efforts of Agurian. Um, mm -hmm. Since you know a lot about LinkedIn as one of those organic platforms, any like tips or tricks uh, for success um, that you could tell us about? Absolutely. Yes. For LinkedIn, um, the tip well, I'll go into it a bit more, but, but basically the tip, the tip, the, it's more than a tip, the strategy, the way of being, let's put it that way. All across social media, all across it, one must understand it is just another box for communication. So 
a box. I'll give you some various boxes. And I see things in boxes because that's how my mind works, literally in boxes. OK. okay. So, in the real world, you're at a networking event. That is a box of communication called a networking event. You're talking to people. It's a box. Certain way, you're not going to talk to those people exactly the way that you would like in a LinkedIn message, but you're talking to them in a certain way, which is human. One box. Second box is you're on a sales call. That's another box. Okay, it's another phone booth. Okay, so you're on a sales call. That's another box of communication. Still, you're going to talk to them like a human being. Okay, now we have another box. We have a box that's called LinkedIn messaging. Okay, inbox. Okay, now why is it that all of a sudden we're in another box and people go mental? <laughs> why is it that they all of a sudden start spamming people in this box where they never would have done otherwise unless they're a bad networker when they're networking? Would you go to a networking event and go, hi, here's my link, da da da, do you want to sign up? No, right. you would not. And then go to the next person and do the same thing and one right. after the other. People would be like, wow, that person's really, no, you're not, not, not good. Right. So in a sales call, you're going to have a rapport, get to know them, blah, 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 right? You're not going to go, hey, how are you? Here's my link. Sign up. Boom. Thank you. Okay. That's the problem. The problem is, especially in LinkedIn, and I got two like this today. Hi, how are you, Sean? You look amazing. Here's my link. Please sign up. Blah, blah, blah. Can we help you? I don't know these people. Yeah. It's not good. So the, the, the tip is be human. And what I call, I call it soul to soul communication. Another box is this podcast. We're in a box, we're two boxes actually. This is another box, right? So I'm not gonna go, hey Josh, here's my link, please sign up. Oh, oops, it's your podcast. Oh, sorry, no, we're having conversation so right. people can hear my story, get some help, be inspired, right? So again, if I did not respect the box and spammed your podcast, you'd be like, well, that wasn't cool, Jean, what are you doing? So, yeah. <clears throat> respect this overall overarching philosophy called soul to soul communication where you're actually interested in that human being as a human being so you want to practice something called heart soul to soul communication and this should be in your life as well now how do you do that you listen if somebody's talking listen now it's the same for messaging so let's say I say hi and I, I you know, I, I start a conversation, okay? And they go, hi, Jean, blah, blah, blah. And then they, they say something and I ignore what they say and I don't validate, don't acknowledge it, and I just keep talking about myself. It's kind of like, again, wow, um, I just said something and that person completely ignored it. And now they're, so it's not listening, it's just spam, 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 spam. Now, I used, to be an, I used to be an actress and I'm going to tell you something, there's something called Meisner technique, okay, in acting. And what it is is that you, you, and teach actors how to actually listen, okay? So usually the actors, and it's kind of weird to look at if you're not an actor because you think, what are these people doing? Well, actors do a lot of strange things, okay? And you're both staring at each other and one person says something and the other person repeats it. I'm really mad at you. You're really mad at me. Then, and, and it's kind of weird because it seems like there's this disconnect, but actually what it does is it gets the actors to listen to each other rather than talk over and not listen and just like say a line and say. So basically, in acting, a bad actor will just like wait for the other actor to say the line to have their cue. Because a bad actor, all they care about is saying their lines. <laughs> we all know this. Yeah. They're dying, to, like dying to say the line, right? But actually, when you really look at like really good actors, have you noticed that the ones that are really great it's when they're not actually saying anything. You're just seeing the process take place behind their eyes, like they're realizing something. And it was only when I'd acted for a while that I thought, ah, the real good actors are never, are sometimes not saying a word, right? Yeah. You're seeing all this emotion pass through them. So there you go. There's an acting lesson in Meissner to have people listen. So the tip is, don't go out selling. Don't don't go out fight. You know, go into the ring punching. You go out. And you listen and you have a conversation and those people really appreciate that that you're actually truly interested in what they do instead of hey yeah. how are you here's my business I want to get on a call now two people did this today and I, of course I'm very nice and I go well, that's so interesting and then I turn it around and ask them questions about it so that they then get into a conversation with me sure. instead of and, and then that that then makes it 
I, I will turn the conversation so that without them realizing what I've done often, that and now we're communicating and I'll, I'll save it for them. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. Don't that. go spamming people. Yeah. I love that. I mean, just that concept of soul to soul communication, I think is super important, not only like on LinkedIn and in professional settings, but also in, in life in general. So I know that there was another concept that we kind of talked a little bit about uh, when prepping for this, and, and it may very well be related to this, but I know that you said that like one of the keys to success is mindset. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that's uh, like, hey, bring soul to soul communication, that's the mindset you should have, or if there's something more to that, but tell me your thoughts on mindset and how it leads to success. I mean, there's so much about mindset. We, I was just thinking that mindset is everything. Mindset is in everything that we do, whether we know it or not. Whether we're fixing our mindset or being in mindset, mindset's there no matter what. So you can't escape a, a mindset, whether that's good, neutral, bad, or needs optimization. So when people go, yeah, I'm working on my mindset, I, I always think, well, actually you're working on your mindset in a bad or good way, no matter what, right? You're, there's something working. So mindset's so key. I mean, literally, I'm like, you know, you need good strategies. Okay, so there's a thing of people just always working on their mindset. I love it, but you know, you still need a good strategy. You still need to know what steps to take. So you're gonna, I have to, my mindset's just such a great place. Really? Okay, now you need a strategy. You need a vehicle for that mindset to be successful. Then they have the other people that they're just all strategy and they're wondering why it's not working. It's because they don't believe it. They don't believe they're the greatest. They, they, they lose their power every second of the day. They're crumpling. So yes, mindset is so important, so much so that I have seen people with terrible strategies and it works no matter what. I'm like, well, that strategy technically yeah. wouldn't have been great, but because I know this, I'm like, well, with somebody with such an incredible mindset, almost anything will work, okay? So, so yeah, super important, better to have both. To me, it should be a marriage. There should be neck and neck. Mindset, good strategy. Mindset, strategy. Neck, 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 neck. That's what works. To, to have an optimal mindset for getting any, anything done, you have to have mindset with strategy, and you have to believe that it will work. Although, you know, I have seen some people like myself that ha didn't have full belief just doing the reps, and that can get you into belief. But mindset's something that you do need to just be aware of every single day. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, mindset is definitely a key to success. I'd agree, and our uh, tagline is have confidence, uh, right? So that's what it's all about, I do believe. So anyway, I appreciate the answer. So last question is around kind of thought leaders. So you're a thought leader, but I'm always curious about what thought leaders are, who you're listening to, right? Who you're reading. So can you give the audience a, a tip on who they should be listening sure. to or reading? So the one I really, really follow is Ray Dalio. I mean, it's not one. Ray Dalio, um, lots. Joe Dispenza, people that have passed away, like Maxwell Maltz with Psycho Cybernetics, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. So there's a bunch, but um, for now, I, I think Ray, there's so many, right? So many. Um, yeah. and, and I'm always discovering new people. What is it, what is it about Ray that you. Well, enjoy? I mean, the whole principles thing, having principles in the first place. Um, also, of course, there's women. Yeah. So let's think of some women, you know, like o Oprah is amazing. Like the, what that woman did was incredible, right? I feel bad that I only mentioned yeah. men. <laughs> That's terrible, because I do follow women. No. But with Ray, getting back to that, you know, the whole idea of principles, that blew my mind. You know, you write your principles down and you have principles. I have principles. The fact that he made that formal was amazing. And also just this whole view of what's going on right now. And you know, it's just very, very interesting. Yeah. And by having them written down, then you can like reflect on them and make sure that any decisions and um, kind of forks in the road that you're confronted with along the way, you get to look at those and say, am I doing the right thing? Am I living by my principles? I think it's a great piece of advice. So, John, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Appreciate your time and all your thoughts. Uh, so that's going to be it for this episode of How It Works.